Holly, Hi. and we're going to take some <laughs> pictures. Yes. So, so uh, you want to tell your roller skate story? I found them at this Asian market uh, like two years ago. They, they were like, well, they were priced at $25, and I bargained with the guy, which I never do, because I'm usually trying to be really respectful to But I got them for 15 bucks and they fit perfectly and I was on the hunt for roller skates anyway. Holly and I recently did this 90s inspired shoot with a vintage twirler uniform and these awesome skates. It was pretty basic two-ish point lighting with a gridded softbox and softbox opposite profile. I wanted a broad soft light that would allow her some movement. I diffused the lens with various filters, as you'll be able to see in the review and editing sections. Also broke up my recently acquired Mamiya RZ67 and 127mm lens for its first test drive. I shot a roll of Expire 220 Portra 160, and I had a great time with it. My settings didn't really require much of a tweak between the cameras. And that was one of the main reasons I decided to use flash instead of continuous lighting. I also diffused a few shots with this uh, old star filter, as you can sort of see here. The RZ is easiest to handle on a tripod, and the waist level viewfinder worked well with the camera height that I wanted anyway. We wanted fashion with attitude, and I think we accomplished it. The colors are bright. All in all, I'm pleased with the results from these digital photos. And I used my Canon 40mm STM lens to get some wide angle results to exaggerate her limbs and poses. You'll see some of that star filter haze on this one. Here you'll see a hint of my color developer mixing and developing process. So I have this roll of Portra 160 NC that I shot with Holly and I really want to develop it. And first I have to mix my chemicals. Another thing I'm trying to do with this video is that we're going to be taking a look at my scanning technique again. And I've got a video if you'll look on the card. I There's going to be a card and it's going, this is going to expand on that technique. I've changed that technique a little bit since that video, but really it hasn't changed a lot enough. Not enough that I really want to make another video about it just yet, but I will be soon. But this is a little twist on it. I use the Cinestill. TCS uh, temperature control system, basically a fancy sous vide, but one made for photography and not really that much more expensive than your standard cooking where I might add. I have included some links in the description so you can see how these color kits work and how color film developing works. It only took about 90 minutes to develop this film by the way. I'm being real sloppy and you can be super precise with this, but I'm trying to tell you to relax and you should be as precise as you possibly can with this. But if it's in a way of you developing film and doing photography, be a little sloppier. If So what you see here is the film actually drying. Probably be a couple of hours before before this is done. And then, but for video purposes, you're about to see some fun things you can do with color negatives, uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera, a macro lens, or your phone. I'm 
here with my usual DSLR scan setup, basically Canon version. Got the light table, got the camera. I do live view with a touch shutter now. Um, let's see, there we go. And you'll see that you can zoom in on texture really closely and just make sure you're focused about right. Uh, I'm sure people will have issues with the way I'm doing this. And you'll see how you can just do the standard, the standard full fill the frame uh, type thing. Uh, I'll just get kind of close here and finish these up. See, gentle tap, no camera shake. And then, this is while messing with these uh, negatives on a large light table, I have a little light pad actually, a large light pad, not a large light table that I uh, realized I could take pictures of the negative sheet backlit on my phone and edit them. And I'll actually show you how to do that uh, real quickly after this. When I realized that these were basically contact sheets and that with a little bit of um, moving this up my enlarging stand and zoom in as much as you can. You have to be careful not to move the camera around too much while you're focusing. If you hold on too much, you gotta let it settle back. The thing is, this is at wide open. So this is at 2.8 and I'm shooting at 7.1. You can do all kinds of thing, creative things with this. And this just kind of borrows from the contact sheets of old. Oh, okay. Uh, you would take your negatives and put them on a sheet of paper, shine light on it for, you know, so many seconds. And then you would have your test exposure. So you'd have your, your, your index print. But I like to do it, and this was inspired by my, um, so you have to, you have to think about this one. But this is inspired by my experiments with, um, just scanning stuff, wanting quick prints on my phone. So I've got an empty space here. I just want to borrow that. And I'm a little limited with a couple of things here, just because uh, these, let's see. I could take that out easily and lay just the negatives on here, but I kind of like this. We're gonna look at this on a computer really quick just to show you exactly what you can do with this. Let's take a look at my DSLR scans. Of course, always the first thing you should do before you do any of this is to white balance using your negative rebate if you have any, which is the edge of the negative. And it helps to include that on any of your scans, as I probably mentioned in the last video, I hope. As you can see here, there's a little histogram behind the curves on the curves panel. So what you want to do on this method when you, you you need to grab the white and black points of those curves and you need to then press them into the edge of that histogram. Uh, this is very non-technical speak. Uh, I, I really don't want to like talk about stresses and heels and toes and stuff like that. But you just kind of line that up with your histogram and then use the middle of the curve to, to slide it. I like doing it horizontally, not at an angle. It's real tempting to, to adjust curves on an angle. I, I think you should keep it flat across uh, at first. And you can just tweak your colors from there. Do all three at a time because it's gonna look awful until you have them all back in balance. And then you'll start being able to adjust and fine tune. And Take note of those uh, spikes in the histogram out here on the side of the, the these curves, as those represent the pure white areas of the light table between the negatives. So I just tend to disregard those entirely because they'll mess up your, your edits. You'll see here where you can get uh, another look at how the histogram helps you place your curves and your curve points, I guess and how that uh, it just is your shortcut to getting good results from these without uh, using external software or other tricks. I like to note that you'll see the rebate fade out on these 
that's the the border of the negatives like i said you'll see it kind of get too bright and that's in part because of the curvature of the film and uh, in part because of the sleeves they're in too using mask and anti-newton rain glass can help press images flat for critical reproduction in this case however i wanted to have some grunge and dimension You'll notice if you mess with this, especially in Lightroom, that your basic controls are backwards. In Photoshop, it's a little easier to deal with because you can either have exported this as a normal picture or you can just straight invert it and then bring up other layers that would help adjust like normal. So the that can help, but I like doing this because I have the power of raw files to deal with. Also, here's something handy with your phone. That's a great trick for making previews and creative edits for mobile stuff. Also, I've made a preset of the inverted curves and that way I can just mouse over my other previews and actually see roughly how they'll look inverted. And then I just click it and then I can carry on without having to do the individual kind of tedious lifting and lowering of curves. And you can also do your inverted curve if you want to do the simple method of just doing the combined uh, curve inversion. I love the design aspects of the rebate and the contact sheet style. And I love how naturally all of this tends to come to analog. And I love combining the analog and digital aspects of this. The photography council has seen your sins and your combination of digital and analog technologies in ways that aren't sensible or reasonable. And we will report back to you for your sins. Also, please note the very fine detail you can get. Even shooting through negative sleeves, you can see the grain very clearly. And this may have been one of my diffuse shots. I, I really don't remember. I never thought shooting photos of negatives would yield such a great result, but here we are. Let the doubters flail their T-Rex arms. We're making pictures. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Share it. Let me know what you think. Please feel free to comment. Also, thank you to the newest member of my zine subscription club, Stephanie K. Smith and Ronnie Pittman, another member of the Zine Subscrip Subscription Club, Rachel Singletary, May, and Sarah. I appreciate all of the support, and it's only getting better. So join my Patreon to get a quarterly zine and a monthly print and access to more video stuff and the first look at things when I get done early. Also, I'll be in New York City this week, and then I'll be in rural Pennsylvania, so maybe I'll see you there, but you'll see it on here. Thanks. Bye.